Hello and welcome to the Talking Locks with Lockitude podcast. I am your host, Adi Balugun. This is episode number 28. So I am trying something different and something new, and I'm going to be doing a lot of pondering and wondering, and I hope you can stick with me through this episode. So I started my locks um, 13 years ago to this year, and I think about seven years ago now, I started writing a blog, and about a year after that, six, six years ago, I basically opened the Lockitude studio and since then I have met possibly thousands of people that have locks and I've helped a lot of people, a ton of lockheads on their lock journey. So a lockhead is somebody who is in my world every single day and the experience of being locks has always made me ask some questions and about um, five years ago, six years ago now, I think more like six years ago, I met a bunch of lockheads who would walk into the salon and who would want to get locks and they would always ponder and tell me or more like they would always worry about how locks are going to fit into their world. You hear ladies say things like, oh my hair fit me um one of the experiences i personally had before i said my locks even though that was a much longer time ago was that my hairdresser henry told me that i wasn't going to find the husband because i was intending to lock my hair he was like the boys don't like it so there's always been this negative connotation that is surrounding the idea of locks i would agree that it's a very different world than it was a decade ago like you know locks are very different in 2022 than they were in 20, 2009 for me in Lagos but there's an underlying um, there's an underlying sameness about the worries that people have and the concerns that people have and I'm hoping that in the future episodes after this one after my pondering we would be able to figure out why and how we got to where we are and what we can do to have a better experience as lockheads. Um, so let me take you back down memory lane. I think in 2010, my locks were about a year old at the time. I used to have this uh, sit partner at work, the like boy James Wu Wu here, in his loose natural form. And this was about 12 years ago now, so that wasn't popular. Nobody was really wearing afros in Lagos. And um, she walked into the office this day and her hair was short. She had cut her hair. Um, and I was like, why, why do you cut your hair? She used to put them in, in two strand twists and then she chopped like half of it off. And she was like, oh, it takes me too much time to get it done. So I decided to reduce the length so I don't spend so much time getting it done because I can't find anywhere to get my hair done. My response to her, even though I was natural and I was locked, was, why don't you just get a perm? Because in my mind, Dolakwa's natural hair was stressful. It was kind of ugly. It was, you know, all of that impression I didn't actively have in my head, but it was there. Dolakwa had the good grace to patiently explain to me why her hair was the way it was. She also had an experience of growing up in England for a very long time. So she had this racial um racial backdrop to hair that I didn't have, uh, that I did not have because I grew up in in um, Lagos, Nigeria and, you know, basically we had 99.9% black. Um, however, most of us at the time would wear wigs, weaves and get a perm. So Dolak was explaining her experience made me see that, wow, I had chosen something that was natural to me. I had done it from a place of pure convenience. I wasn't thinking about race. I wasn't thinking about anything else. But this thing meant a little bit more. And this has always led me to ask the question, so why do we feel so negatively about our hair? Well, I have pondered a lot. It's been a lot of years and meeting so many people. And from my perspective, I have like three questions. Why do we approach the world with caution when it comes to our hair? Um, I recently moved to the US and I thought it would be a different experience. But every single person that I've seen walk through the door, you know, has this caution. So even though locks are technically more um, acceptable in the US, 
you have people who are going for job interviews and they are concerned about, you know, do I take it off temporarily? Can you pull it back so tight so that it doesn't look intimidating? So there is that undertone that there is something not right with our hair. In some ways, it's obvious to the African-American community because it has a lot of racial tension between how, you know, I, I don't really know all of the history, but it is just obvious that there is racial tension when it comes to the hair politics. And then why, as an African on my own side of the world, is our hair tainted with so much negativity? These are some of the questions I asked. And thirdly, and I was like, why do we need to tame our hair to be able to fit in? Why? So this this answers seem obvious from a very political point of view, but I'm choosing to go like a little bit deeper to find out what exactly is going on. Um, the best way to see the world is through my own eyes. And growing up in Lagos, uh, mainly in the 90s, three things come to mind as to why locks may be perceived as negative. One of them is the unkept mentally ill person that littered the streets back then in the 90s. So um, I think uh, a governor, a past governor, Fashala, did a good job of clearing the streets and, you know, trying to take care of people who had mental issues. But you have people, you used to have people litter the streets and, you know, they would have uncombed hair and their hair would mat. And all you would see when you thought about locks and what we call dada is a mad person. So much so that the first time I wanted to lock my hair in 2006. I mentioned it to my mother and she kind of, she's always supportive. So she didn't say anything about it. And then we're driving down the road um, probably a, a few days later and she saw a mentally ill person on the side of the road and she taps me and says, hey, look what you want to do to yourself. So could it be that the reason there's a negative connotation with locked hair when it comes to the African space is that you are seen as basically being mad. Uh, you know, I'm asking the question why. The other thing that comes to mind from my perspective is a Christian religious sect called the Celestial Church of Christ or the CCC. So most of the kids that come from this church have locked matted hair. And um, I did some asking and I think I still need to do more research to be able to know if the answers I'm getting are real. But I do hear that when a child is born, a spiritual leader kind of tries to foresee the child's future. And sometimes there's a recommendation to not comb the child's hair for a few years or until the child says they want to, their hair combed out and all of that. So you do have a lot of kids that have locked hair in that spiritual sect. Um, so therefore, the sect in itself, it's a sect. So most people do not want to be identified with something that they do not necessarily identify with. So when I 12 years ago in Lagos, like with locked hair, people will ask you like, you know, are you Sele? Why do you have Dada? Because they feel like there's some spirituality with it. And I even remember back in the 90s when um, you had kids that went to school with you that had locked hair because of their religion. They would tell you things like, oh, if you cut the hair, that blood is going to come out. Don't joke with somebody that has Dada because they're like, you know, spiritually stronger than you are. It will be, inter it will be interesting to explore, you know, that line of the negativity and the spirituality of our hair. The third thing that comes to mind, however, is the reggae artists, usually affiliated with the Rastafarian culture and marijuana smoking. So um, it is not uncommon for or let me speak to my personal experience. I have been to parties where someone taps you on the side and tells you, you know, like, you know, do you know where to get some weed? And I'm looking at you like, why are you asking me of all people? But that's because there's an assumption that because you have locks, you actually do also smoke weed and engage in all these things. But the truth about it is that I feel that you don't have to have locks to be anything Anybody can be anything. Amongst any group of people, there are good people, bad people, marijuana users, um, people who might have mental illness and all of that sort. And should we really be stereotyping ourselves based off of our hair? So those are the three major things that came to mind for me. And nobody has really had an African president with locks or at least not in my lifetime. And if there's one out there, I'll be glad to know. In more recent times, more of the popular Western um, artists 
I have had locks like Jay-Z, who is a billionaire, and maybe that's why it's a little bit more acceptable for young men in America to have locks because there's a prospect that you are not a bum if you have locks. But basically, there is all of this complexity that makes us feel not comfortable with ourselves, that makes us feel like we need to go an added step. At the same time, Africans are traditionally very fashionable people. We love our color. We love to express ourselves in different ways. And so are we just projecting what we think might be wrong with us? Or or am I just projecting what I think might be wrong around the negative connotation? And is it just people expressing themselves the way that they usually would like to express themselves? Anyway, these are all sort of things that I would love to explore. Um, I'm not sure how many minutes I wanted to speak for, but it's going on for quite a long time. But in an upcoming episode, um, I'm hoping to speak to a mother and her 16-year-old son who has locks and the fights and the quarrels that they've been having based off the based off of his mom's um, projection of what she feels locks locks hair means and what this you know teenager actually what locks means to him and like just basically exploring it from inside why do we feel the way we feel about this hairstyle why has it now become so trendy is it just a fad is it just something that's going to pass anyway i said a lot of things and i'm going to be wrapping this up very very soon i just want to say a few things that comes to mind you know i think the africans also discount a lot of the effects of colonialism on our african hair it would be nice to explore it for someone like me who grew up in lagos to feel like getting your hair straightened was like the only way to have nice hair besides maybe wanting some convenience and choosing to lock your hair where did that all stem from um Also, another interesting thing is the term dreadlocks itself. There's a lot of content on the internet about where the word dreadlocks stems for. But I also ponder really and hope to investigate where does the dread in that word come from and why why is the word dread in a word that refers to African hair. Also, um... There are all these like questionable beauty standards that we have projected for ourselves. One of the most scary things about having locked hair for almost anybody is that phase when your hair is short. But this is because Western media has been so good that all of us in the world grew up on Snow White and, you know, a, a, a Disney princess. And we feel like long hair is what you always need. African hair, the, the, the mm, how do I put it? The easiest way and the most less strenuous way of getting your hair long when you are African is actually locking your hair, but it's still frowned at. However, there are new ways people are going about it. There are the really tiny locks, which is like new age locks. And it's interesting to explore why we would want to sit down for so many hours to get our hair so tiny to make it look a certain way. Is it still a projection of how we want our hair to look more Western and taken away from how it originally looks? Or is it just a nice thing to do, a beautiful way to think about your hair? These are the questions I ask myself. I still ask myself, though, why that discomfort? Why do I have to? Why am I uncomfortable with the cocoa in front of my hair? For, this, for those of you who don't understand where, what I mean by cocoa, when your edges coil up and your hair is very kinky, why do you really have to like straighten it out with a brush is it something do you really look better when you do that or is it a societal expectation for your hair to just be slick and gel down it's ridiculous how this um what do you call it now the baby edges that people do on the internet it's quite scary with people even gluing things to their forehead i would love answers to why we are uncomfortable with the coil and the kinkiness of our hair There's also, you know, I think this conversation and the questions I ask will also reflect on a fundamental part of how society perceives us everywhere in the world. Um, Police brutality is something that is is, um, prevalent everywhere in the world. And it is interesting because... Even when I was in back, but if even when I was back in Nigeria, I'm watching Western media and you're seeing black men being pulled over because they are black. But in Nigeria, the NSAS process which we had in October of 2020 
was basically a reaction to young boys choosing to keep their hair matted, being pulled down, pulled over by police officers also. You know, it basically all intertwined. And if you get to see where I'm going with this, it's a connected <laughs> mashup of experiences that has gotten us to where we are. And if we truly want to move forward so that I don't have a kid that is growing up and, and is a teenager or a young adult and doesn't understand what exactly it means to love yourself and why it's okay to be yourself, then it would be a problem. Then how much of the corporate world actually embraces locks? It is interesting that um, this country, the US of America, has had a black president with a black wife who had straight hair. Was there a reason? I don't know if anybody has ever asked Michelle Obama why she, at no point in her ring, wore her hair like natural or even if it was a natural looking big. So why? Why? I'd really love to know why. I'm asking a lot of questions. And there's another part or there are two parts um, before I wrap this up eventually. There's also locks and the corporate world, which kind of actually links back to um, you know, how you never really, how it is not the accepted way to be. And when I say not the accepted, it just seems like, why is it intimidating for anybody else? But I think that understanding the whys is how we actually build a better world. And lastly, is Dada something that is primitive? Oh, I think there's a, this, when I say primitive, Africans, or let me speak for myself and how I grew up, if you did say you were into like traditional African worship, for instance, you would be considered barbaric. You considered like you drink animal blood and you kill people for sacrifice and everything negative about it. But we kind of forget it's like backward. You're being barbaric. If you identify with anything African, it seems to be primitive. However, in the little research I've done, I've seen that African gods are depicted with hair. And if we are looking to our higher self and trying to be better versions of ourselves and what we used to believe in before the influence of, through influence of other religions, through colonialism and slavery and all of that, then is it really bad to have our hair as our hair? And is it old and primitive or is it just what we are and who we are? So I have said a lot now and I'm hoping to get more answers and I'm hoping to break down all of this in future episodes. And um, right now, I'm going to leave you with one thing. You should get on YouTube and you should find the TEDx Adi Balugun um, presentation that I gave back in 2017, where in 11 minutes I tried to kind of formulate my ideas, and I, I titled that talk "The African, the Hair Revolution, the African Hair Revolution," and it was quite interesting. So if you have answers for me, I'll be ready to listen to them. And for now, I want to say thank you for tuning in and listening to the Talking Locks with Lockitude podcast. I am your host. Ade Balogu. And thanks to my producer, E the Mastermind. This has been an interesting turn of an episode, and I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to hearing from you. Keep it locked with an attitude. Bye.